My name is Philomena Kwao and I'm a plus size model and beauty activist. I believe it's important that all people should be able to celebrate who they are and express themselves, whatever their colour, size or gender. Growing up as a young black woman in London, I often struggled to buy makeup that works for my skin tone, which seems crazy in this day and age. I need a powder that doesn't look grey. I also need a foundation that doesn't look green on my skin. And I don't know, they can just like realise that we exist. <laughs> you feel like you're not important. Like, what's happening? Why am I not being represented like everyone else? We're not just like two shades. It's just something that you grow up with and you get used to, but it's not fair that you have to have this struggle. I remember the first time like my mum took me to fashion fair and I was like, oh my God, like there are other colours. I can actually look like, you know, the rest of my body. I'm here at Warnell Studio Soho. I'm going to meet Florence, the creator of MDM Flow, a cosmetics brand purely catered towards women of colour. Just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I really, really appreciate it. So what products does MDM Flow provide? So at the moment, um, we have three main products, our semi-matte lipsticks, mm -hmm. our liquid lipsticks, and our mascara. So what made you want to set up MDM Flow? Always been a massive geek. Um, okay. Loved science, loved biology. Chemistry was my favorite subject in school. And then when I was 17, I got a job on a makeup counter. And I think that's when I actively started to think about like products. I was thinking, why is there literally nothing for me? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just set up a lab in my parents' shed and just started formulating like colors that I thought would look great on my skin, on darker skin tones, and also that were just a bit more diverse and creative. Do you think the cosmetics industry is becoming more diverse? I think it is becoming diverse, but we're still at a point where the floodgates need to open and just for diversity to be celebrated. So like we've got to a point, but like we've got to keep pushing, if that makes sense, okay. so that we really get the difference. Your journey is inspiring. It just shows a lot of young people that you do have the power within you and the tools around you to, you know, create a product. I thought it was just a UK problem, so I'm here in New York to see if anything is different and to meet a bona fide pioneer in black beauty, Iman. I'm going to a beauty cosmetic shop in Manhattan to see if they have any foundations that match my skin tone. There isn't actually that much. I haven't found any foundations, any powders. I don't see anything that represents me, anything that represents my kind of beauty. Wow. It's actually quite funny. This is dark. Yeah, this is natural. Natural, guys. Sometimes the name of the products as well also has an impact on how you feel. This isn't something that is rare. This happens to me all the time. The darker you are, the more excluded you are. And this isn't a problem with only black women. It's a problem Asian women face as well. Or anyone who has a skin tone that isn't necessarily affected in mainstream beauty. Again, three shades of brown towards 10 shades of beige. That's positive. This one just has 14 shades of beige. The irony of it is that their selling point is it says it matches 99% of skin tones. It's strange to think that it's so hard to find makeup for black people in such a huge black community across the United States. One person who knows all about this issue is former supermodel and beauty pioneer, Iman. Iman is an icon for women of color everywhere. She showed the world that beauty doesn't only exist in the West. And she launched her own cosmetics line to show the world that beauty could be for everyone. I'm going to her Midtown headquarters to hear her story. What was it like for you starting modeling in the 70s and 80s? It, it's weird to say that it was so really more advanced than it is now. Because, you know, when I started with Beth Ann, uh, the balance of diversity, I was shocked that how many models were working in my heyday than were working a couple of years ago. I came here in 1975. Mm -hmm. The makeup artist asked me, did I bring my own foundation? I had no idea what he was talking about, so I said no. And so he proceeded to do my makeup. And when I looked at myself in the mirror, well, I looked great. I learned then that I had to, to really control my images. So I went out and I went to every store I could find mm -hmm. and I would mix it and I'll put it on my face and finally I found something very, a little suitable. And I made a batch 
Yeah. This is 1976. Wow. And I carried it with me to every shoot I've been. I still do the same thing. Every black model I know yeah. carries her own foundation. For me personally, as a plus size model who's also very dark yeah. in my complexion, it's yeah. been very, very difficult, especially in the beauty industry, even with makeup. Yeah, and I, I never understood that. They mm -hmm. can hire a girl as dark as you are. And you're not that dark. I mean, you know, in Africa, we have dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it just gives them the opportunity that the public can see if they have foundation for you. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they will have a foundation for me or even a girl who's lighter skin than I am. Mm -hmm. The same thing applies to the, to, to the plus size. To me, if nothing else, mm -hmm. I would say, isn't it a good business decision? Even if you're thinking about money. It's almost quite offensive. It, th exactly. <laughs> That's why I created Imam Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, even being a model for so many years, I couldn't find foundation. Iman, you have such a powerful voice, and sometimes I feel like my voice is this small. What do we need to do to see a real change? You, collectively, you're, we're much stronger than individually. Mm -hmm. So you find collectively a group of models, like we did me and Bethany and Naomi did. Mm -hmm. Blog it, yes. and it will be heard. Well, thank you so much, Iman. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. And will I always be trans? Yes. Am I a trans woman? Yes. Multiple things can be true at once.